Hello everyone, so uh, I will be picking up where we left last time for module 2 on Azure Virtual Machines. Uh, so we were going to cover lesson 4 for the virtual machine availability and the uh, custom extension. Uh, I thought about it, so I was still thinking I will do one more session on this because uh, if, if I don't do the demo, then you're, it's hard for you to uh, really visualize everything. But again, the, the demo for this is, again, really hard as well because I have to simulate a failure or simulate something. So it's going to take time and uh, really time consuming. So, but again, so what I'm going to do is in this lesson, so lesson three and lesson four on virtual machines, I will do the explanation on the uh, all the definition here. So we'll, you will be clear, like what what is what. And on the next session, we'll do purely demos on everything because exam wise that doesn't cover this much but as there are a lot of things that should you should know in your production environment so even though this is exam based training but i was hoping to give you a little bit more information so regardless of the exam scope all right so let's get started so uh, yeah we will talk about the um, the availability overview is the uh, maintenance and downtime the availability sets so we're going to use short for as Update, update domain and four domain scale sets, implementing the scale sets, the auto scale, and uh, implement the auto scale. All right, so uh, let's first, uh, before we get into the uh, the PowerPoint, so I just want to ask, uh, not really ask, I just want to point out that if you are a system IT for on-prem servers for quite a while, you should know that, uh, uh, you know, oh, uh, I, I don't know, really know the situation in the U.S. So, but in China, is uh, most of the time the IT have to stay on overtime due to an update, right? They have to update the server. Uh, sometimes the update doesn't really matters, but you know, for major update, the server needs to be reboot, right? Once reboot, the IT has to make sure that everything stayed up and running, so this doesn't disrupt their works. So that's why they stay overtime in the night. To, to update the servers, uh, that's one scenario. But this is not really good because since the IT staff have to stay and do the OT, right? It's not really uh, a good way for maintaining everything. So it's better we can just do this uh, in the you know at the daytime. So this is the one thing. Another thing is sometimes you know when these uh, server has an issue, it's down, right? It's for whatever reason, it's server room failure, power failure or it's the server got really old and you know, it's just broke uh, anything that could happen you never you can never or it just about being hacked you know whatever the reason is so at that time the IT has to do the troubleshooting and replace sometimes the the hardware and that can cause issues so the in China actually in 2016 I think there's a major uh, uh, failure in one of our uh, they, they call it a sea trip so this company for booking, you know, hotels and uh, and tickets for trains and uh, uh, flight. So there is a day they have a uh, daytime. They, their server room have a major failure, which uh, all redundancy has been it's not working, has been purged for some reason. So no one could book tickets. So they are they are the almost the largest, uh, you know, booking company in China. So which caused a lot of issue for that day. So people cannot travel or. Uh, or anything, so uh, that's one of the scenarios that's happened. So it took their whole IT stuff the entire afternoon to recover uh, everything. And uh, another scenario I want to tell is, uh, uh, I don't know if you heard this, in China we have this called 11.11 shopping day. So also for JD the company JD.com, they also have this uh, June 16, 18. You know, the day they will give you huge discount on almost everything. So as low as 50% or even 30 uh, or 80%. So that day, so almost the entire Chinese people will be doing online ordering, right? So you can imagine the hit their server going to take. So at that time, right, the, the midnight, like 12.01, zero literally one bit in hands clicking their mouse to you know clicking the purchase button so you could imagine the the stress their server is taking it's enormous right they, they, <laughs> uh, i have friends working there they have 
the, their network team, their server team, everyone literally kneeling down in their server room and praying, hope everything don't crack. Doesn't matter the redundancy, the uh, the, the availability group, the, the, the configured on permits, still a lot of hits. And every day, every time that happens, it's a new thing, right? Some server will fall, some server will, server will down. So that's a huge issue the IT admin have to face, especially if you're in a, in a large enterprise company like that. So that's the some basic IT scenario I just uh, mentioned. So now we get into the uh, the definition uh, that's according to our lesson, you know, in Azure. So uh, uh, you know, as an Azure administrator, you must be prepared for those planned and unplanned failures we just mentioned. So there are three scenarios that can lead to your virtual machines in Azure being impacted. So there are unplanned hardware maintenance, unexpected downtime, and planned maintenance. So the third one is really nice. It's planned by Azure. You don't have to really worry that much still. A maintenance will sometimes cause a reboot, but it will still affect your business. You know, very little, but still it will matter. Uh, unplanned hardware maintenance, the first one we mentioned. So this can occur when the Azure platform pr predicts that the hardware or any platform component that's being associated to a physical machine is about to fail. So when the platform predicts a failure, it will issue an unplanned hardware maintenance event. And Azure use the live migration technology. So if you are interested in the what is a live migration technology, you just you can click on the link below in the description to follow that. This won't be covering the uh, exam or anyway. So this Azure uses the technology to migrate the virtual machine from the fail, uh, failing hardware to a healthy physical machine. So the live migration is a VM per um, preservation operation or technology that only pause the virtual machine for a short time, but performance might be reduced before uh, or after the event. So the second one is unexpected downtime. So this is when the hardware or the physical infrastructure for the virtual machine fails unexpectedly right so this can include local network failures local disk failures or you know the server rack level failure uh, you know when this was detected uh, is detected sorry the Azure platform automatically migrates or fix or heals your virtual machine to a healthy physical server uh, not server physical machine in the same data center right not not different you know like the zone redundancy we're going to talk about in later modules so during the fixing healing process, the virtual machine ex uh, experiences the downtime and will reboot. And in the uh, same case, lost the temporary drive. So plan. So the third one is a uh, planned maintenance events. So these are periodic updates made by Microsoft to uh, underline Microsoft the Azure platform to improve overall reliability and performance, and also security of the platform infrastructure that your virtual machine is running on. So most of these updates are performed without any impact upon your VMs or cloud service. So you don't have to really worry, but uh, take a note, the Microsoft does not automatically update VM OS or software. You have to complete, you have the complete control and the responsibility for that. But however, the underlying software host and hardware are periodically patched to ensure reliability and high performance at all times. So those are the three different uh, you can say downtime or maintenance you can have, situation you can have in your uh, production environment. All right. So uh, I, for folks that's not really that IT, uh, I think in module, uh, I forgot which module, but I don't have much more, uh, many sessions at this moment. But even though we say it's a cloud, your servers, your software, your service still running on physical machines, right? So. If even this, even Microsoft purchased pretty much the best hardware it can be purchased on the market, it still have a, it still can have failures, right? And your application has to run on one of those machines. And if something unlucky happens to that, it can cause your service or machine be turned down for some reason. So uh, even. But Microsoft guarantee like almost 99.99% of uh, uptime, but still that 0.01% is what you have to look for. All right. So uh, now we introduce the idea of the availability sets. 
So if you're on-prem guy, you must know there the term we call is high availability, right? So and there's another term called disaster recovery. So we do not mention those in Azure. So there are called different things now, right? So this one we're going to introduce is availability sets. So what is an av as a availability sets? So the AS is a logical feature used to ensure that the, a group of re related VMs are deployed so that they are not all subject to a single point of failure and not all upgraded at the same time during a host operating system upgrade in the data center. So the VMs in Azure are placed in a availability sets. You know, they will they should perform the an identical set of functionalities and have the same for, so, software installed. Right? So the uh, Azure ensures that the VMs you place within the AS can run across multiple physical servers, uh, server racks, storage units, and network switches. So if a, uh, if a hardware or Azure software fails occurs, only a subset of your VMs are impacted and your overall application stays up and continues to be available to your customer. Uh, so the AS are an essential capa um, capability when you want to build reliable cloud solutions. You know, when creating AS, uh, you know, keep these principles in mind. So for redundancy, configure uh, multiple virtual machines in the AS and configure each application tier into separate availability sets and use uh, management disk with those uh, VMs. Also, you need to combine a load balancer with the AS as well, right? So, uh, the uh, uh, I think I better just draw something, right? That's in case you, it's hard to uh, you know visualize what I just talked about, and if you really don't have any hands-on experience with this. And uh, yeah, there are like different charts in uh, in Azure and pictures to to talk about all this, but still it can be confusing. As this this is really important, that's why I want to spend some extra time on this. So imagine you have rack one, so and a rack two, and these racks are in Azure, right? So you have your uh, let's say this rack, uh, so, sorry, this blade of servers. And this uh, blade of servers, right? Okay, let's say now you have your uh, web service. Let's see, web service running on this server rack, right? And now something unfortunate happens to it, right? So the service is down. So what you're gonna do is uh, you cannot do anything, but at the same time, I'm sure we'll make sure that your service step and running, right? But it's better if you plan this beforehand right you don't want this to happen to end user you don't want your end user to you know browsing and purchasing something for your website and suddenly the, the website is down and you lose money to it right the the it will take the blame which is you so you want to create an availability set that you put your web service into server rack So this is different from load. Um, I, I won't say. Okay, yeah. Let's don't. Let's forget about load balancing at the time, right? So when you have these two service web service running on two server, right? If one fail, let's say uh, we use this color. If this fail for some reason, the second web service will take over immediately. So to the end user, it's a seamless fit. They, they don't know that your server is down, right? They will still be able to purchase or do anything, do whatever they want on your website. So that's the idea of what is availability means. So it stays available, right? So this goes same for updates, right? In case this has to be updated, you know, you it, it's done as well because when it's updating, uh, doesn't matter. It may cause actual CPU usage and cause the server to go down on, you know, uh, or it's being rebooted for. Uh, when it's configuring the updates, right, it's may stay down for 30 minutes or 90 minutes. So during the time, your server is still down. So when you have an app uh, availability set, the uh, the service will stay up and running. All right. Okay. So your virtual machines, or doesn't matter, maybe your SQL Server, right, whatever it is, they don't have to be on the same SKU, but we prefer they have the 
they have identical configuration, right? We prefer that way. So you can have, for example, you can have this one as, you know, eight CPU, virtual CPUs and uh, 64 gigabytes of RAM. And uh, it's Windows Server 2016. So we prefer, you know, when you manually create this, they are the same. So you can do different one, but we prefer they are the same, right? They are identical. All right, so that's the idea of availability. And uh, yeah, for the uh, uh, service level requirement of the SLA, right? So for all the VMs that have two or more instance deployed across two or more uh, availability zone in the same Azure region, Azure guarantee you will have the virtual machine connectivity to at least one of the uh, one, one instance at uh, least 99.99% .99 of the time. Right, so you can uh, if, if, so if this again is new to you, there's a we in in IT, you know, uh, we manage this as the uh, how, like how many nines you have at least in China the way we call it, right? So uh, you can there's a oops, sorry, let me use the pen. So let me create a new one actually. So we don't save this one. There's a nine 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 nine. Let's see this right. So it's always something like this. This is uh, six nines, right? There are six nines, actually. Uh, right, six nines. What it means is uh, you, you multiply this by 365. This is not a leap year, right? And times how many seconds you have per day. That's this much, right? So you multiply that, that, that you get a, uh, like a, and so let's wait a minute, do it real quick, right? Uh, see, it's 99.0. Point, uh, and we times that by 365 times. So, uh, uh, I think I do it wrong. So, sorry, my bad. I was saying something. So, there is a, you know, the, you use one to minus. 0 0.09, so there is a 0 0.00000. Ah, uh, my bad. I'm sorry. Yeah, this we times define times r zero zero. So in a whole year, your server could be down for 31.536, so 32 seconds, right? That's the uh, uh, we say six nine. So if you increase the nines, so there are nine nines, eight nines, right? That's uh, if you have more nines, of course it's going to be reduced tremendously. But so if you have, let's say this one is uh, zero, uh, I should guarantee it until here, right? So uh, that's uh, zero point zero 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 one times seventy five times eight six four hundred. So uh, yeah, so your server, your service could be down for almost an hour, right? Three three thousand one hundred fifty three seconds. So that's the impact. But it's not a continuous <laughs> one hour, right? It's uh, uh, it's across the year it might be down for an hour. So that's uh, what we say, you know, in the IT uh, admin world. So how many nines you have? Actually, you may recall that you, sometime when you're at home, your internet is down. When it's come back up, either you know some guy from uh, uh, Verizon fix your fix your uh, machines or internet. You, you you always do like kind of access Google. Why do Google suddenly pops your mind? Not like I want to access uh, YouTube or uh, let's say Facebook. You might use that as well, but it's not won't won't be other website like your school website or anything. Why those website coming to your mind? It's because they have really high availability. They have I don't know, we mean nine or ten nines there, so you, the server entirely may be done for three seconds. So the chances are you in, you happens to have those three seconds of not connected, it's very, very low, and it's not gonna be like a continuous three seconds. It might be one millisecond per day. So nobody really experienced that, right? So that's something extra knowledge. I saw it might be helpful your, uh, if you're not if you're already new to this, All right? So. Uh, uh, introducing the fault domain and the uh, the update domain. So yeah, it's actually a picture I should draw. So it's prettier than mine, but I thought to give you the brief idea of what it is, right? So uh, the updated domain and the fault domain, 
the uh, helps Azure to maintain you know the high availability we said and the uh, fault tolerance when deploying and upgrading applications. So the, each VM's in availability set is placed in one update domain and two fault domains. Right? So what is an update domain? Uh, the update domain or UD is allows the Azure to perform incremental or rolling up updates across the deployment. So each update domain contains a set of virtual machines and associated physical hardware that can be updated or rebooted at the same time. So during an, um, a planned maintenance, remember a plan and maintenance, only one update domain is rebooted at a time. By default, there are five, right? It's not user configurable. You cannot change that. So by default, there are five update domains, but you can configure up to 20 update domains. So uh, what is a fault domain, right? A fault domain, uh, it defines a group of uh, VMs that share a common set of hardware. Remember, hardware. So this including uh, switches, uh, server racks, and uh, uh, I forgot what, what, is, but what are the things, but in you know, a common sense, uh, a power supply, right? So uh, share a single point of failure. So this that's what they share. So for example, server racks, you know, serviced by a, uh, set of our power or networking switches, the VMs in the uh, availability set are placed in at least two fault domain. So this will minimize or mitigate against the effects of hardware failure, network outage, uh, power surges, interruptions, or software updates. So the idea of placing your uh, your VMs into availability sets does not protect your application from OS or application specific failures. For those, you have to uh, look into the uh, disaster, disaster recovery and backup techniques. So this is something different, right? Just the, just in, you know, you have to take into your mind, right? It does not protect your application from OS or application specific failures because those are inside your VM, right? I sure protects what whatever you create, uh, the VM, you know, the base, but not what within your VM. So that one we're gonna talk about. Uh, later on, but that's uh, generally the idea of update domain or full domain, right? So uh, we can do this real quick. But again, as I mentioned, the demo will be majorly in the uh, uh, in the uh, we're in the next session. But still, with uh, let's still give you an idea of those. So let's create just the virtual machine real quick, right? So you remember the the last set more lesson we uh, lesson we had, there's a lot of things I didn't go through, right? Because if I go through this, it won't be covered even in three hours. All right, so we uh, give the name, just demo, uh, availability sets, demo AS. Yes. I'm oh, sorry, so let's just random select anything. Right, so uh, let's go to the, uh, let's make it just a Windows Server. Uh, no, okay. I have to give it a username, password. Of course, you can pro create this um, prior to it. It's no problem. I just want to know, like, if you don't have one. Oops. Oh, my bad. My bad. And uh, oops, I seem to. Forget. Uh, okay. Give me one moment. I seems to forgot something. Okay, yeah, that's here. Availability options is not called availability sets, right? So, <laughs> my bad. So there you can see there's a availability zone and availability set. So we create, we select the availability set, right? So uh, if you don't have one, you can create new. It asks you to create from here. So now you can see here is the uh, by default two uh, four domain and five update domain. It says so you can scale this up or down, but uh, 
uh, you can see there's a warning, right? So for each uh, location, actually, you have different uh, limitations for that. For most of it, it only allows you to have two for domain, not three. Uh, let me see if we can find. Yeah, so this article here, let me open, oops. Yeah, let me zoom that in a little, out a little bit. Yeah, you can see here for, yeah, the number of domains per region, right? The max, right? This you cannot, something uh, you cannot just request to change, actually. I mentioned something you can request to change the number of, uh, you know, resources you can have per, per resource group or regions. But this is not something you can change, right? So it's for East US, there are three. For multiple others, generally there's only two. For US one, uh, uh, there's a many three, so if it's in US, but for the other regions, majorly it's only two. Okay, so this is something you have to take into consideration before you do this, right? So this doesn't allow I have to have three, so it's two is maximum, but up to domain can have up to 20, right? So uh, uh, the demo is gonna be introduced in the next session, again, just to stress. If you want to see the demos, you know all this, you can just skip to the next session, right? Okay, let me just close all this. All right, jump back to our uh, PowerPoint. So now we come to this uh, uh, terminology called a scale sets. So what is a scale set, right? The VM scale sets is the, uh, uh, you can treat as, it's a sure computing resource you can use to deploy and manage a set of identical VMs. Now it must be identical, which means everything must be the same, right? The sizes you choose, blah, 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 have to be the same. So with all the VMs configured as the same, the VM scale sets are designed to uh, support or, uh, you know, auto scale, no pre-provision of VM is required. So, and as such makes it easier to build large scale service targeting big computing, like big data, you know, data analysis and uh, centralized workloads. Uh, so as demand goes up, more virtual machine instance can be added. Uh, and as demand goes down, virtual machine instance can be removed and you know, vice versa. So the process either manual or it's, uh, it's can be uh, automated or a combination of both, like a hybrid scenario, right? So the scale stats works in a way that provides a lot of benefits, right? So listed here, so the, all the VM instances are created from the same base OS image and configuration. So this approach lets you uh, easily manage hundreds of VMs without additional configuration task or network management. So uh, mesh hundred actually goes up to 1,000 for, if it's automated for, uh, not automated for the OS you're selecting Azure, but for, if you are doing this, man, and, uh, you are doing a custom image, it only goes up to 600, right? So the skills that support the use of the Azure load balancer for uh, the basic layer four traffic distribution and Azure application gateway for uh, layer seven track field distribution like the SS and SSEL termination, so if it's, that's needed. The uh, skill set is also used to run multiple instances of your application. So if one of these VM instances has a problem, the customer of uh, yours continues to access your application through one of the other VMs instance with the minimal interruption. Uh, you know, customer sometimes demands your application for your application, is, you know, throughout the day or week, right? They sometimes require more, sometimes require less. So uh, for this, I don't mean that they, they need more VMs from you. It's they need more resource or computing power from you, right? So to meet their customer demands, so the skill sets can automatically increase the number of VMs, uh, the VM instance as the application demands increase, then reduce it uh, as the demand decrease, right? So this is what we call auto scale. So you don't have to manually click the button to you deploy more VMs or de uh, reduce more, uh, reduce some of the VMs, right? So uh, the skill sets up support up to 1,000 instance. So 1,000 is the maximum. So the custom image is uh, 600. So there are articles you see out there. So they're talk about 500, 300, 200. But remember the number as of now I checked today on the Azure website, it's uh, 600. So for this, I have to ch keep you know, check is the, the it's Azure, right? They keep updating and change, right? So this come to my uh, 
example in the beginning, right? I mentioned that in the uh, shopping day in China, the double eleven or June sixteen. So that's what happens, right? When thousands, billions, or thousands, billions of uh, hands clicking their mouse hit the purchasing button. So you can imagine the load the CPU gonna take for those machines, right? So when they they still do this in on-prem, actually they have their own server. I don't blame them, right? They, it's Ali is a huge company. Maybe they have their own cloud service, right? They don't trust Azure. It's understandable. So when that happens, you know, when the CPU usage for let's say 2,000 server hits 95%, it's really dangerous, right? Something could crack and it's snapped, and um, no one can shop anymore. They lose the money. Not just Ali lose the money. The uh, 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 the buyers lose their stuff to they want to buy, and the sellers lose the money they want to earn, and you know that huge chain reaction. So if with the auto scale, it can say, okay, I sense uh, if, you know, let's say 200 servers, their CPU has been above 80% for more than five minutes. Now let's turn on another 200 virtual machines to balance that, right? So up to here, uh, I have many uh, actually students before they ask, like, what's the difference now between a scale sets and availability sets? To, to us, it sounds very familiar, uh, not familiar, it's very similar, right? So what's the difference? The scale set, the, the, uh, the, uh, the turn on in case of uh, failures or anything, the load increase and the uh, availability sets also, you know, have to, uh, you know, spread my virtual machine in different uh, racks, servers. So what's the difference? So put it, put it simple, the availability targeted, targeted for failure so it's it's similar to a dr disaster recovery but not recover it's just in case of a disaster happens the server service still being provided to your end user or to whatever that's been using those services right or an update happens but scale sets it's targeted for demands the demands for the service if it goes up of course you need more resource to handle that if it goes down you don't need that much, right? You, for example, the uh, you turn on, let's say the RD example. Now there are 500 servers running, but you know those the only the first three hours that right, people are shopping because they have already have the, their ideal items in the uh, in the shopping cart. They finish shopping, and now they don't need it anymore. But your 500 server is still up and running. It costs you fees, right? Doesn't matter if it's in Azure, even their own electricity fee, that's still money. You don't want those 500 server to running with average 10% of CPU usage. So you can say, okay, when those average CPU usage goes below 80% for more than 10 minutes, turn on 400 machines. You okay, get something like that, right? Okay, so uh, just to be clear, availability set is for maintenance and failure. Scale set is for providing uh, resource or reduce resource. Right? There are different things. Don't get confused. And the scale sets must have identical VMs. But availability set don't has to be, but recommended to have the same. Because the availability sets, it's a uh, different, right? They can be, they can be different tiers, right? You can have application tier. You can have database tier. So there are different tiers. So you might place them in different availability set if you need. So to implement the uh, the skill sets is fairly simple, right? Just choose the the virtual machine skill set, like you know the zero to one thousand, the size of each machine, right? You have to select the size, like you create any virtual machines, right? Whatever you want. And remember here, it's charges money. The highest uh, the skill you select, the more money. Just check the money in the last column when you select, right? And use management disk. So if you select do not, so by default it's management disk. If you prefer not to use management disk, uh, it's highly unrecommended. But if you decide to be, there are some best practice, which uh, you, again, it's not in the exam scope. Uh, for production purpose, you can feel free. Azure has some best practice for you to 
uh, to create like you have to use different storage account, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right. So something like that. But it's always recommended to use management disk. Right. So in case if you don't use unmanage, in case there is a resource needed or uh, or reduced, it can cause some failures. Right. So that's why we say use management disk. And uh, yeah, auto scale. So we introduce this. This is just uh, you can manually do this, or it can be automatically uh, done. So it depends on the uh, the uh, the threshold you set, right? So the way to implement that is fairly simple. So you just say, okay, I want it to enable or disable, right? So uh, enable this. The so minimum of VMs, you, of course, you must have one, right? So maximum of VM is ten. So I don't want for your testing purpose, you don't want uh, I don't want haste to one thousand why one thousand charges a lot of money for practicing, right? Scale out, right? It's when the CPU reaches seventy percent, uh increase one. So when it's below twenty five percent, you reduce one. Okay, that's the way of doing that. It's fairly simple, it's very straightforward. All right now we're interested in the idea of um, virtual machine extensions. So it's uh, again, three uh, uh, modules in here. So virtual machine extensions, the custom strict extensions, and the DSC, the desired state configuration. So in creating, uh, you know, creating and maintaining VMs, uh, it's a lot of work. As you, if you are practicing now, you should be knowing that. And remember, you are only practicing, not in production. So and much of it is, you know, repetitive, requiring the same steps each time. So fortunately, uh, even though you do it with a script, it's a lot of work to do, right? So fortunately, there are several ways to automate the task of creating, maintaining, and even removing the virtual machines. So one way is to use a virtual machine extension. The Azure uh, VM extension is a small, uh, it's a small application, provides a, what we call the post deployment configuration and automation task on those such VMs you have. So, for example, if a virtual machine requires software installation and antivirus protection or uh, some configuration script inside, right? So, a VM extension can be used. So, extensions, uh, the custom extensions are about managing your virtual machines, right? Azure VM extensions can be either managed with Azure CLI, PowerShell, uh, Azure Resource Manager template, all those things we demonstrated before, or using Azure Portal. Uh, or the second way can be bound bundled with a virtual machine deployment or run against any existing system. So for example, they can be part of a larger deployment configuration application on a VM provision or run against any supported extension OS after the post deployment. So uh, there are different extensions uh, for Windows and Linux machines and uh, you know a large choice of first and third party extensions as well. You can feel free to browse in the extension uh, part so uh, uh, you know custom the uh, script extension right so uh, this can you know use to automatically launch and execute the virtual machine uh, customization tasks after the configuration so you script uh, extension may perform very simple tasks as for example stopping the virtual machine or install software component uh, however the script could be more complex and perform series of tasks so this is similar like uh, uh, I don't know if you done this old with pro plus deployment right so the way for you know uh managing the office pro plus update is you can have an extension to let the uh when the machine the end use machine turns on it's suddenly uh, you know silently check in the background right no power shot command pull window pop up you can check whether there's an update if there is just update right so there's uh just give an example right so you can install the C, uh, CSE customer script extension from the Azure portal by accessing the virtual machine extension blade, as we see earlier. So once the CSE resource is created, you will provide a PowerShell script file. So remember, it's a PowerShell script file, right? Your script file will include the uh, the commands you want to execute on the VMs. So optionally, you can pass in arguments such as you know. Uh, parameter one, parameter two, etc. Once the file is uploaded, it executes immediately. Uh, there are some things to consider. So first is timeout. The uh, custom script extensions have uh, 90 minutes to run. So if your deployment exceeds this time, it will be marked as timeout. So keep this in mind when you know designing your script. And of course, 
uh, your VMs must be running to perform the task. You cannot have it be shut down or deallocated. It doesn't work, right? Huh? I think this is a simple logic. You cannot have something wrong when the machine is turned off. The second one is dependency. So if your extension requires networking or storage like access, make sure that content is available. All right. And third one is uh, fail in man. So be sure to account for any errors that might occur when the running your script. For example, you know, running out of disk space or uh, security access restrictions. You know, those permission issues you have to looking for. And third one is uh, uh, like sensitive data you have. So your extensions might need sensitive information such as you know credentials, uh, your the storage account names you have, and the storage account access keys. Right. So look for those. All right. Again, the demo will be done in the next session. So apologize here. So uh, the desired state configuration. Right. So. Uh, this is the management platform in the uh, Windows PowerShell, which enables you know deploying the and managing configuration data for software services and managing the environment uh, which those services are run on. So the DSC provides a set of Windows uh, PowerShell extensions, languages, and command and the resource that you can use to declare and specify how you want to or your software environment to be configured. It also provides a means to maintain and manage existing configurations. And in the DSN center, uh, uh, the, you know, it centers around creating configurations, right? The configuration is, you know, uh, easy to read script that's describing environment made up of, you know, computers and uh, with, spec you know, specific characters. So those characteristics can be as simple as ensuring a specific Windows feature is enabled or complex as deploying SharePoint, uh, SharePoint servers, right? So use a DSA when the CSC uh, not work for your application, right? So um, if you are using the DSA script, right, cons you know, it's will be cons uh, construct or have the following component, right? The configuration block. First is the configuration block. The configuration block is the, um, uh, Outermost script block, so you define it by using configuration keywords and provide uh, providing a name. So, uh, like the example we have here in this case, the example of the configuration is IIS install. So we install an IIS, a web server, right? And the second is one or more uh, node blocks. So this defines the nodes, or you can choose the computers or VMs, right? The terminology is a node, but you can say it's define the VMs or computers. That you're configuring. So in here, the uh, the node block the target the computer is we call the uh, local host. You see the node here is local host. And third one is you know you have one or more resource block. So this is where the uh, configuration sets the properties for the resource that's you know it's configuring. So in this case, there's a, a resource block that's use the Windows feature resource three. So Windows feature indicates the name, which is in case the web server of the role features you want to ensure is added or removed, right? So ensure the uh, indicates if this role or feature is added, your choice is you know present or uh, absent. Right. So uh, yeah, so we're gonna do the demo in the next session because it's been 43 minutes. As I said, I don't want to have any session uh, more than 45 minutes. Right, this has been a really dull listening probably for you, but this really key definitions you have to remember in mind. And please read the links below for more details. You have to understand everything first before you do the deployment, right? Don't do the uh, the deployment first along, you know, do a lot, uh, learn along with your deployment, learn and deploy. Okay, that's uh, the preferred, preferred way of uh, learning everything actually.